I work for the uh, Drupal Association on the engineering team. Uh, so we keep Drupal.org running. Uh, all the subsites, we have five or six Drupal sites, uh, maybe more uh, Drupal CI, uh, and of course our GitLab installation at uh, git.drupalcode.org. Uh, and let's see. Uh, yeah, there's only four of us on staff. We're a small team. Uh, we have uh, Tag1 uh, providing some infrastructure support and uh, three contractors at the moment. Uh, so uh, why GitLab? The, so the initiative is really, it, it's not exactly GitLab, even though that's in the name. It's uh, really about improving developer tools on Drupal.org, and the main one happens to be GitLab. Uh, and yeah, we're... The initial GitLab migration was a minimal, um, let's get it running for our repositories, Git repositories, and uh, but there's more ca capabilities. So we've added in merge requests and uh, you know issues is the next big thing. Uh, and you know there's going to be some trade-offs as we go. Uh, GitLab, uh, you know, we'd been building the issue queue as a bespoke system uh, for just Drupal.org um, over the years. So there are th special things that we that are important to us that uh, won't necessarily transfer over to GitLab. Uh, and we're not customizing GitLab at all. GitLab's a product. Uh, it doesn't have hooks like Drupal, doesn't have modules. Uh, it, you know, you get what you get out of the box uh, with some configuration. Uh, and uh, along the way, we're going to be simplifying what's on Drupal.org. Uh, for example, we had a uh, big database of every commit message, so we could count those up, put those on your user profile, and stuff like that. That's extra stuff to maintain when GitLab um, GitLab has its own views of what you've done in GitLab. Uh, so. Uh, the, yeah, the big picture of what we're doing, uh, we have uh, account creation, uh, simplifying Drupal.org, and uh, GitLab CI in, in progress all at once. Uh, projects and releases won't have big changes, and then uh, issues, uh, we're doing a lot of planning around. And I'll go into all of these. Uh, so account creation, this is this is the big part that's not, not GitLab. Uh, basically, you know, we want want it easier. Want it to be easier for people to get into the Drupal community, uh, get an account, and be familiar with the tools. And uh, you know, there's some perception that you know, like patches are hard. You know, gets also hard. Uh, but um, you know, you're more familiar with uh, dealing with uh, uh, rebases and everything nowadays than uh, re-rolling patches. Uh, at least people who aren't uh, outside the Drupal community. Uh, so, uh, and we also have a old single sign-on system called Bakery that uh, was made as a little more than a proof of concept. That was, it was meant to be temporary, but we've been using it for probably about a decade. Uh, so we want to replace that. Um, and yeah, social sign-in, sign in through uh, your Google account, sign in with your github.com account. Um, and providing federated login. So uh, you could log into your uh, Drupal camp, uh, wherever site using your Drupal.org login. Uh, so stuff that's not changing too much. Uh, projects, those are staying on Drupal.org. Uh, you know, Drupal's a good system for fielded data, all of these things, uh, project browsing. Um, you know, can we do a better job of project browsing? Sure, uh, there's uh, ways to improve that. The Project Browser Initiative will help us with that. Uh, but, you know, sending people to go look for repositories and read the readmes uh, and, uh, it would not be a better uh, solution. Uh, and, you know, everything, most software we install is uh, through package management systems of some sort, like an app store or uh, you know extensions for your browser. 
uh, releases. Those are staying on uh, Drupal.org as is. Uh, the main thing is um, Drupal core expects uh, packaging, uh, expects those couple of lines to be added to info YAML files. Uh, so, you know, once Drupal core uh, doesn't require that, uh, when or if that happens, then we could consider uh, letting people do their own packaging. Uh, but then, uh, you know, we have all the old versions of Drupal, so it'd be waiting for uh, Drupal 7, 7 end of life and everything. Uh, so yeah, we could revisit releases later, uh, but it's be pretty, it would also be pretty low impact. Only a few maintainers make releases where, uh, uh, and you know, where magnitude more people will participate in this UQ at least. Uh, so uh, some of the stuff we've been changing, uh, simplifying Drupal.org, uh, SSH keys, we used to man it, have a, system to manage SSH keys that I assume only Drupal.org used. Uh, actually, no, Agar used it as well. Uh, but yeah, we'll let, let GitLab do its own SSH keys. So look under the preferences menu. We've opened up a few others. Uh, GPG keys, if you want to sign commits, you can do that. Uh, preferences is where the uh, dark mode and all of the kind of visual stuff is. and. Uh, active sessions and audit authentication log. If you want to audit who's been accessing your account, make sure it's only you. Uh, and yeah, part of the reason we're really concentrating on the simplifying Drupal.org part is, you know, we want long-term this to be easier to maintain than uh, rather than just adding more work, more maintenance. Uh, and, you know, we're, Drupal.org is still a Drupal 7 site, so anything we simplify, that's something we don't have to figure out how to do or migrate to uh, once we move to Drupal 9 or 10 or wherever we are We are uh, when we do get that migration, like the actual proper migration underway. Uh, and yeah, the big database of commit messages, uh, we, we don't need that. GitLab can handle commit messages. Uh, so, you know, you've already seen part of that change on project pages. We have uh, pictures of people rather than um, number of commits. Uh, the development block has a couple more uh, more links there. So GitLab has good uh, graphs of activity, who's been committing what and when. Uh, so, um, you yeah, know, we're like Git, GitLab do what it's good at. Uh, the documentation links, those are being simplified right now. Uh, GitLab gives you a few more options for documentation. Uh, every project's gonna get GitLab pages if they wanna use it. Uh, so, uh, you know, in the past, if you didn't have a documentation guide in Drupal on drupal.org, you'd be kind of relegated to that external documentation link. Uh, so, uh, you know, simplifying that. And yeah, of course, when issues migrate, um, something will have to be done with that issues for to, uh, issues module uh, block. Profile pages, these are more upcoming changes. Uh, so those commit accounts, that, those are gonna go away. That was pretty much over half the maintenance we did with the old uh, before GitLab. Uh, you know, people asking, Hey, why why didn't my number go up by one? Uh, and explaining, well, uh, you know, ten percent of the time it was uh, something uh, wrong on our infrastructure, uh, and then ninety percent of the time it was well, we don't we didn't have your email on file. Please confirm it. Uh, so yeah, again, those commit counts are going away. We'll probably replace it with um, my best idea is just a list of projects you maintain. Um, and you know we need a link to your get.drupalcode.org profile. So I've been thinking about how to make that wording not clumsy for uh, six months and haven't come up with anything. Uh, and yeah, again, your get.drupalcode.org profile, that'll have your activity of uh, what you're committing. 
uh, GitLab CI. That is the uh, kind of big focus right now. Uh, and the big theme there is GitLab CI is, uh, is it's decentralizing the CI setup. Uh, every project will set up their own thing. Uh, a few projects have it available. Uh, the some of the core JavaScript components, you know, they're using. Um, uh, you know, they have uh, JS uh, specific testing. The Drupal CI is useless to them because it's not Drupal. Uh, and yeah, there's some big parts of Drupal CI that are cumbersome to maintain. The uh, dispatcher.drupalci.org, it was a public Jenkins server. Uh, I don't think anyone ever recommends you run Jenkins on the public internet. Uh, let's see, uh, uh, project issue file test or PIFT, if you, uh, that's the module we used to uh, uh, queue up tests, uh, send them to Jenkins. Uh, so GitLab's gonna handle all of the uh, scheduling, figuring out you know, what's a merge request, what needs testing. Uh, and the test by itself, that's gonna be uh, more of a translation uh, to be able to set that up again. Uh, so, you know, where we've been spending a lot, uh, a lot of the time that we've completed is uh, getting the infrastructure ready. Uh, so GitLab CI, uh, you know, like everything, built in the last couple of years is it's just containers. Uh, so, you know, we want to figure out the best way to get the most value out of, uh, you know, this all runs on the AWS, so it costs money. So we want to figure out, you know, how to get tests run quickly, uh, but also as cheaply as, as we can. Uh, so yeah, just learning Kubernetes administration, picking out how to get the uh, spot requests instead of uh, full instances and you know other AWS AWS cost saving tricks. Uh, and for actually running the tests, uh, every project's going to have to set up a GitLab CI .yaml file. That's the uh, that's the part where every project's going to be somewhat on their own. Uh, you know, Drupal CI, it's you know pretty rigid and testing worked if it was a Drupal module. Uh, GitLab CI will have to every maintainer will have to uh, set it up themselves. Uh, and yeah, our aim is going to be to is going to be um, making that transition uh, pretty smooth uh, for people. Uh, so. You know, there are templates, so there's ways that uh, we can uh, kind of shortcut some of the work for people, uh, uh, for module maintainers. Uh, and uh, so yeah, GitLab CI, that's available uh, for a few projects right now, uh, and the rest is going to be uh, probably a uh, maybe a couple more rounds of projects could opt in to have uh, GitLab CI available. And um, it's the sort of thing, uh, once we know it's in a good spot, uh, once we know, you know it's as easy it, as it can be for someone with a module to set up their GitLab CI YAML file, um, then uh, we'll just turn it on for all projects. We don't need to have a big transition period. Um, and, uh, but yeah, once a project uh, starts using uh, GitLab CI, then they're effectively saying uh, that they, they don't accept patch files anymore, the, those maintainers. Uh, because, you know, GitLab CI, it works on merge requests. Uh, it doesn't know what a patch file is. It won't test it. Uh, so yeah, start using uh, merge requests uh, with the uh, issue forks system that we have with the old issue queue integration. Uh, you know, there's gonna be some rough edges uh, on that. Uh, we'll fix anything that prevents people from using uh, merge requests and issue forks. Uh, but, you know, it's kind of a stopgap. Uh, you know, it, it helps the transition so we, we can start using merge requests, start using GitLab CI without moving issues over. Um, 
so all the code for this will be thrown away at the end. Uh, so we're only fixing what's needed. All right, so covered uh, all the stuff that's in progress and the stuff that's not changing too much. Uh, issues, that's mostly in planning mode. Uh, and there's, uh, yeah, credit uh, collaboration and then the actual migration. Uh, and, you know, why aren't we just, uh, you know, flipping on tomorrow, uh, you know, there's some parts of the issue queue, you know, the parts that we've built uh, for ourselves over the years that, you know, we want to make sure we preserve, we want to make sure we preserve the collaborative uh, natures of, of issues from Drupal.org. And, uh, you know, make sure we're thinking about uh, all the trade-offs along the way. Uh, so collaboration, uh, so this is the, uh, so in the last year, uh, five, uh, let's see, in the last year, almost 2,000 issues have been fixed in Drupal core, and on average, uh, 5.8 people were credited on each issue. So yeah, especially core, it's, it's the norm for uh, multiple people to be working on any given issue. Uh, and, you know, we do stuff like, you know, someone uh, posts a patch file and then, you know, a few weeks later, uh, someone else uh, posts another patch file. And whereas GitHub, GitLab, they're more designed to be uh, one person uh, carries forward the whole, whole issue, whole merge request. Uh, so we want to make sure we uh, keep the collaboration aspects, uh, make sure you know, you have some way to push to a merge request if you didn't start that merge request. Uh, and also, you know, same way we have with the issue forks, uh, make backups, uh, since, you know, it is easy to make mistakes with Git and push stuff you didn't mean to. So uh, there's no chance you'll um, completely remove someone else's work. Uh, and also another big thing that, uh, isn't collaborative with GitLab out of the box is uh, the editing the issue summary, uh, which we use quite a bit on Drupal.org. Uh, you know, maintainers, uh, especially core maintainers, expect the issue summary to be in a good spot before they get to reviewing an issue. Uh, so, yeah, we're looking at ways we can set up the permissions in GitLab. You know, permissions in GitLab are pretty static right now. Uh, you know, you get four roles. So they are what they are, no configurable permissions, but we can figure out what permissions we give to certain people. And yeah, hopefully we'll, uh, I think we have a plan for being able to edit the issue summary, but uh, we need to go back and verify it. Uh, issue credit, that's been, I yeah, I did not realize what, sort of system I was making when I built issue credit. It's gotten a little, uh, it's, it's important to the Drupal community. Uh, and yeah, I think we have to maintain that. And our system's pretty complicated. Um, you know, you say, you know, am I doing this as a volunteer or for a, an organization? Is this organization, you know, where I work or is it a customer? Uh, so we have all these bits of data uh, that, uh, yeah, we'll want to cl uh, collect somewhere uh, and, you know, keep, and particularly keep uh, organizations motivated to contribute back uh, to Drupal. Um, we, you know, GitLab doesn't have any issue credit system today. Uh, they're thinking of adding one, uh, but, you know, we don't, they're a company, they have their own priorities. So uh, we're not counting on them to get a credit system uh, in place uh, for when we need it. Um, that could change. Uh, you know, we haven't we haven't put any you know real work into rebuilding it um, yet. But you know, if we get to the, get to the point where we need a credit new credit system, and if GitLab doesn't have it at a certain date on the horizon, then we'll build our own and. Yeah, you know, it's just fields. Drupal's good at it. Uh, and of course, if we build our own uh, system, then 
you know, it'll pull metadata, uh, you know, like how many emoji reactions you get in comments on the issue and uh, summarize that so maintainers can decide who, they, who they'd who they like to credit. Uh, and the another, you know, before even gets migrating issues, uh, look, look at all these references to issues that aren't issues that are, we're just probably gonna lose those. Uh, so in particular for core uh, change records, um, yeah, we'll probably have some sort of uh, system that you know, recognizes the uh, GitLab abbreviations, the explanation point number, uh, and I think they do the same uh, pound sign number for issue numbers. Uh, but yeah, the expanding based on status, uh, you know, the colors there are based on the issue status. GitLab doesn't have issue status. They have labels. They could mean anything. Um, so, yeah, figuring out all the places where issues are referenced uh, and figuring out a way to uh, change that. You know, may, we haven't really dug into change records yet. Maybe the solution is uh, uh, there's a template and you make uh, something in a wiki on GitLab or uh, GitLab pages uh, to build those up. Uh, and then the actual migration, uh, like everything else, it'll be a project by project migration. You know, we want to preserve as much as possible. You know, we are going to set up labels to match all of the metadata that uh, Drupal.org had, but you know, we won't necessarily um, we won't necessarily um, impose all of the metadata that Drupal.org has. Like, you know, a lot of my projects, I'd I'd like to get rid of the criticality levels because it's rarely uh it's, it's useful for some communication but you know there if there's a mismatch between what i think is critical and what so, uh, the person reporting the issue thinks is critical i i'm not gonna send it back i'm just gonna be be nice and leave it as critical and uh i don't really look at that too too much uh, when i'm triaging issues myself uh, and yeah, we'll have to set up user accounts for everyone uh, on the GitLab installation. So, you know, we're migrating all of the comments uh, uh, and all of the issues, all the historical issues. Uh, we can't do like a, if we did a static archive of old issues that have been closed for however many years, then, um, you know, what we get is a few right to be forgotten requests a year. And on DrupalCon websites, we go hand edit the HTML uh, to remove their profile that they attended uh, DrupalCon 10 years ago. Uh, but you know, we couldn't do that for the issue queue because you know, someone, if someone's made hundreds of comments and would like their account deleted, you know, we are not gonna go edit hundreds of HTML files of old issues. Uh, so you know, it really needs to be a complete complete migration so we can get rid of the issue content type on drupal.org. Otherwise, you know, we'd be giving, doubling our work uh, long-term. Uh, so yeah, it's in the planning stages and yeah, we'll aim to have it be a smooth transition. Uh, so yeah, that's uh, that's everything. Uh, you know, of course we're, at the same time as doing, you know, these, uh, you know, four or six things, uh, we're, we're trying to update Drupal.org past Drupal 7. Uh, so, yeah, quite a lot of work for our small team. Uh, so ways to help, uh, you can follow the meta issue on Drupal.org. Uh, we have a channel on Drupal Slack, uh, do the usual, uh, I think, weekly, maybe every two weeks uh, meetings uh in slack uh you know as things become available you know when 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 you have GitLab ci for your project go ahead and use it uh you probably don't have it right now uh, use merge requests uh get used to that workflow if you're still using patches uh and yeah again on GitLab CI some projects do have GitLab CI enabled and those are the ones that we we hope will help us figure out that template so that 
uh, everyone else will have an easier time of getting their testing set up. Uh, so yeah, I think I can open it for questions. Let's see. <laughs> Thanks for the talk and for all the effort you've put in. Um, you mentioned very casually that GitLab does not have issue status. Um, will there be some kind of replacement? Because now I'm thinking an issue queue without issue status, and I'm kind of sweaty and stuff. <laughs> uh, so GitLab has labels. Everything, Everything's a label. Uh, there are scoped labels where, uh, let's see. Uh, pull up the GitLab issue queue for an extreme example. Uh, let's see how I can get this tab. There we go. Uh, so you know, GitLab, they you know, they're a public, public tra traded company, but they have the idea of being a uh, open. I think is it open core? What's their their whole openness tagline? Anyway, they have a public issue. Uh, they do a lot of their work in public issues, even uh, uh, you know, some company stuff and. Uh, so yeah, GitLab itself, they have an issue queue. And yeah, you can make these as com complicated as you want. Uh, but yeah, the scope labels are the ones that are kind of uh, two, uh, two colors. So the priority and severity, they've decided uh, you know, five point or 10 point scale or something like that. And so yeah, every, every project on GitLab can set those up however they want. Uh, and we could do some, you know, we'll f we want to figure out what defaults make sense for every project to have. Uh, but I don't think we'll in impose the same defaults on every project that, yeah. uh, that no, we but did I think this Drupal. explains a lot. I mean, it's, yeah. it's, it's like more structured than just a bunch of tags and go figure. Uh, yeah. So, you know, that does a lot. Thanks. So what happened to the sandbox uh, projects? Will they also be migrated or? Uh, so yeah, sandbox projects, there's really not a point to having them anymore, but there's not a good place to put them. Uh, so uh, sandbox projects, um, the two use cases that I can think of off the top of my head were uh, you know, you used to have to go through a uh, project application process to make releases of your project on Drupal.org. Uh, but that's changed. You don't need to make a sandbox project first. You should go ahead and make a full project. Uh, and the other is, you know, if you're just making some sort of proof of concept to like throw away or just like put the code up somewhere. Um, I don't know if Drupal.org's the spot for that, I think. Uh, uh, I mean, for really small stuff, uh, GitLab uh, or GitLab install does have snippets. I think those are working now. Uh, they were working for net, uh, before and stopped working for some reason and then started working again. Uh, so yeah, snippets and yeah, make a small, rep yeah. if you know, it's truly like just a proof concept, makes just a small repository on uh, mm -hmm. whatever yeah, my problem with yeah. that is that I've seen sites, production sites that actually use the sandbox modules as if they were normal modules. And if they don't get migrated across, uh, stuff will break. Yeah, well, I mean, they've, you know, the repositories are already migrated. They are GitLab projects, just like any other project on Drupal.org. And they'll have the same, uh, things get migrated uh, as any other project, but okay. Good. Yeah, it'd be it's something that we'd like to phase out, but we can't just delete all of them. Um, you said that Drupal CI is going to be the commission in mm -hmm. favor of uh, GitHub 
GitLab CI. And then the pro project pages are going to be more or less the same as they are right now. And, yep. so, and so are going to be releases. They're not going to be attached that much. Mm -hmm. One of the problem here I see is that uh, as a part of triaging uh, modules that might be useful for you, uh, you are also looking at the Drupal CI status that was featured as a part of the release pane on the mm -hmm. bottom of the product page. Are you thinking about like moving this, the status from the GitHub, GitLab CI and exposing it as a part of the releases pane? Uh, so. Yeah, so what we could do for that is, um, assuming there's a good API for it, we can do you know JavaScript. Uh, a lot of issue forks are uh, JavaScript uh, on drupal.org loading stuff from the GitLab installation. Uh, so if there's good API for that, and I would hope there is in GitLab, uh, we can embed stuff like that, uh, like, like we do for uh, issue forks and merge requests on the old issue queue. Uh, stuff like you know summing up how many commits you've made per project, there's not, there's not an API for that. So that's uh, at least that I know of. So that's why that's going away. I think there was right. Um, you mentioned GitLab is a product. Mm -hmm. I don't know what uh, kind of deal or license Drupal has for GitLab, but I know that GitLab is also available to to host on premise, where you can alter GitLab to your to your liking. So so. Uh, how, how does, has, has Drupal got any of the, that uh, capability? Yeah. So yeah, we are doing on-premises hosting of GitLab uh, and uh, they've given us the, I think it's the, whatever the highest version is, I think it's called the ultimate version right now. Uh, but, you know, the only time we've ever touched their code base is to uh, deploy a fix uh, for something that was broken uh, and it had already been committed upstream. Uh, and we were still in the uh, kind of beta phase and uh, it was okay to uh, okay to have that special deployment process. But yeah, it's a product, even if we're hosting it on-premises, uh, we're not changing any of the GitLab code. There's no hooks to customize it. We can't put things on the page uh, other than, uh, you know, we could have a bot that posts a comment, uh, you know, or we could have a, um, uh, yeah, that's really about it. You know, stuff can hook in through uh, GitLab CI and, you know, say whether something passed or failed, but yeah. there's no, there's no putting stuff on the page. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Um, I heard you said yesterday that um, you shouldn't use uh, the patch uh, links that mm -hmm. are currently on the top of the page. And I can imagine because you said it's not meant to be a patch hosting website. Uh, but I think a lot of people do use uh, patch files as a URL from Drupal.org. Is there uh, any chance that there will be an alternative so you don't have to download every patch, but it can be hosted online? Uh, so I think Composer Patches is really the place to solve that. Uh, and actually, I should go back and the reason you don't want a merge request patch or a pull request patch from uh, GitHub uh, in a part of your deployment is if someone, when someone pushes to that a merge request or a pull request, then that shows up in your next deployment of your site. And unless you're keeping an eye on exactly what you're deploying, reading the whole diff, uh, you know, you're going to be deploying something without, uh, deploying a change without knowing about it. Uh, and it'll sneak in with other, uh, some unrelated change you're doing. Uh, so yeah, don't put dynamic uh, patch files in uh, your Composer JSON. Uh, and I think Composer patches should, uh, there's a couple issues open in Composer patches issue queue. Uh, it could make the local copy itself. So it does uh, status it somewhere. So you do have a local copy automatically. 
or uh, keep track of the hash of that file. So if it does change, then it could alert you and uh, stop the build. But I can imagine that uh, it's preferable to keep it hosted somewhere, just like all the packages. You, we also don't want to put all the packages in Git. Um, so I can imagine that if the link could become stable somehow, uh, like with a, com a commit ID or something like that, then it would not be dynamic anymore, but it will be hosted somewhere. I can imagine that a lot of people would want that alternative because a lot of people use the Drupal.org uh, patches right now, I think. Yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah, and there is uh, there is a issue open in GitLab to make that feature available. Uh, the Maybe way GitLab <laughs> seems to, you know, I, I'm not an expert on GitLab's internals, uh, but they, they have fewer caching layers than Drupal, which I guess is pretty easy. Uh, I think a lot of stuff in GitLab, it goes back to calling uh, the git command to serve a page. So it's not necessarily fast for our servers. But uh, on the other hand, for patches, you know, we can figure out what a patch uh, URL for a patch looks like a, from a merge request that's statically hosted and uh, have our CDN uh, short circuit that. And uh, our, our CDN fastly does generously give us bandwidth for free. So as long as that, you know, as long as the uh, agreement with GitLab and the agreement with Fastly are, are good, uh, <laughs> then we can keep doing it. OK. So are we keeping the the composer endpoints in Drupal or are we migrating them to GitLab? Uh gotta keep it in Drupal. It's the whole point of the composer endpoint is uh to work around Drupalisms. Uh so uh the Drupalism there is uh if I'm running a Drupal module, I require a and require another module. Um that module could be any project in any project. It could be in core. It could be uh, uh, I'm trying to think of a good modern example. But like the there's a lot of modules that are you know the module and then the module underscore UI. Um, there's multiple modules in every uh, yeah, everything that, you download. That, that, that and GitLab and Composer doesn't know what that yeah. craziness is. Composer knows what projects are. That opens the question that we should maybe stop using the info YAML to to to, to keep that track of that information because one of the Drupalisms is also that the core, the Drupal core requirement that we added to info YAML should and then gets uh, automatically inserted into the project's uh, composer JSON by by the endpoint. Maybe we should not be doing that magic and just have it in the composer JSON of the project. But that is probably that's above force. my pay grade. <laughs> yes. <laughs> More questions? Okay. All right. Thanks. Thank you.